For the stability analysis, we have to define the effective lengths and boundary conditions of our steel hull. The available options for the steel design can be found in the data navigator under the new entry, Types for Steel Design. Here you can assign to the structural model effective lengths, boundary conditions, and other properties for the design. First, let's define the boundary conditions by double-clicking the respective option in the navigator. For stability designs according to the general method in Eurocode, it is necessary to define boundary conditions in order to determine the critical load for stability failure. Boundary conditions are to be understood as types. They can also be assigned to several different types of members and sets of members. The segments and intermediate nodes are always counted from the member start. The structure of the new dialog box is similar to all other dialog boxes for creating new data. In the upper field, we enter the desired name and then go to the Nodal Supports tab. We want to create boundary conditions for the beams in the middle span of the hall. Since they each contain three intermediate nodes, we have to add the number of intermediate nodes to the list. As soon as the correct number of nodes is set, we still have to define the boundary condition type of the individual nodes, select the respective members on the steel hall, then confirm the dialog box by clicking OK. By default, the boundary conditions view is deactivated, but it can be activated in the display navigator. For stability designs according to the equivalent member method, we have to define the effective lengths. When using the equivalent member method, the members of a structure are considered individually. To consider the buckling properties of the members, you need effective lengths. Effective lengths are created by multiplying the existing length of a member by an effective length factor. The effective length factors can be entered automatically or manually in RFEM. Next, we open the New Effective Lengths dialog box by double-clicking on Effective Lengths in the Data Navigator. Here, we would like to create two effective lengths for the gable girders and for the gable columns. For the first effective length, we can leave everything as default in the main tab and enter the number of intermediate nodes of the gable beams again in the nodal supports and effective lengths tab. The select member button allows RFEM to automatically determine the number of intermediate nodes by clicking the respective member on the structural analysis model. We assign the effective lengths we just created to the gable girders and confirm the input. We generate the effective length for the frame columns using the same principle. In this case, we enter an effective length factor manually, for example. Now, we have assigned all the desired steel design properties and can start the design. To do this, we jump to the tables and display the results of the steel design. After a successful calculation, you can find the selection of available steel design results on the left in the navigator. You can see the graphical results on the structural model, as usual. In the next video, we will look at and interpret the design results and design details. Till next time.